And welcome to Endgame Chat. This is Saturday, July 8th, 2017. It's Season 11, Episode 26. I'm Scott. I'm RJ. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. And welcome to the show, everybody. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228. 334-272-9228 is the number. Check out EndgameChat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at Endgame Chat. You can find us on Facebook. Same place. You can email us, everyone, at EndgameChat.net. Streaming right now on Twitch. Head over to twitch.tv. In the search bar up at the top, you can type in uh, in game chat and you'll be able to find us. You can also just go to ingamechat.net and the uh, box over to the left has all the links that you need to get in touch with us or to watch us live or to see old episodes if you want to do that as well. So uh, we've got a chat room set up there at Twitch that you can join in on and chat with everybody in there live while we broadcast. Uh, Matt is back this week. Wait, yeah, Matt yes. was gone last week. Yeah, Wait, was, yes, am I? Uh, yeah. Okay. It was RJ was gone the first week, yes. then Matt was gone the next week, and now Matt is back, and then we had a Sarah um, in the meantime uh, who joined us. <laughs> we had us. a Sarah. We had a Sarah. <laughs> There's four ways of confusing. Yeah. Um, a Sarah sighting. How about that? <laughs> she, yeah, she sent me a text yesterday. Yeah. In fact, I was in the middle of the movie. I was watching Spider-Man whenever you uh, sent me a text. How was Spider-Man? And I was like, yeah, come on. You're you're welcome anytime. You <laughs> Thank are you. welcome anytime. Before we move More on. More than me and RJ, I would say. <laughs> yeah. That. There you go. Get that out of the way. So how was Spider-Man? Spider-Man was, uh, I loved it, man. Okay. I really, really enjoyed it. It's on my list of uh, things really to see. really enjoyed it. I also want to see Baby Driver. Man, you are behind. <laughs> Seen them both. I, you know, I was busy last week, and why in the weekend? Why not during the week? Because I worked during the week. I know. Well, so do I. <laughs> but I got to see. I saw Baby Driver and Spider Man, and I worked during the week. Well, you know, my job's not as flexible. I guess I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. You're actually more flexible to see it because you the theaters Fight for freedom wherever there's the trouble. theaters that I go to. Are, uh, I go I go here I go here in Montgomery when I go see it yeah um so and you're like right here I guess in Montgomery yeah. I've never really talked about where you live I live yeah <laughs> East Montgomery we've never had that discussion here's the weird thing folks I've known, known him for so long I don't know where he lives that's exactly <laughs> right I've known him for a very long time and I do not know exactly where he lives it's very interesting um. He knows where I live because we used to. I've do been the there. We used to do the yeah. show out of my house, right? Um, yeah. uh, I live East Montgomery. Yeah, and I but I've never talked to you before. <laughs> I've never been like, hey, I'll come over. No, never talked about that at all. Yeah, interesting. I'm anyway, not, I'm not that exciting. You're closer to uh, to yes. a theater than I am. Um, to want to go to uh, to want to go. So I go whenever I'm off work. I get off. Of course, I get off at three. Okay, no, but no, no, no. get off at like five thirty. Still. You go to one of the shows at, at night and go see it. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, you, you should. Baby okay. Driver I enjoyed uh, immensely. I like Edgar Wright stuff. Mm. Big fan. I enjoyed that. Uh, I think I, I probably enjoyed Spider-Man better, but they're two different movies. But yeah, still. different ex- <laughs> different experiences, I bet. Yeah. No. Um, and then uh, Pl- War for the Planet of the Apes I want to see. Yeah, that's next week. And then Dunkirk's the week after, which yeah. is another one I want to see. But um, movie, movie, movies. I really want to see Dunkirk, but yeah. that's going to be a hard movie to watch. They released, uh, and I just yeah, posted, the, the I, part of the sound. So they, they released uh, an eight-minute clip of Zimmer's score for the film, and it just does it make you want to go uh, play Burnout with it to it? 
No, 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 no. He doesn't. He doesn't. Zimmer. I mean, side bar here as we talk about non-gaming related stuff. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm a massive fan of obviously film scores. Uh, oh yeah, that's pretty much one. the only vi film and video game scores. That's the only vinyl that I own. Uh, are film scores and video games. I wish I could say the same. Um, that's the only vinyl I, I feel worth picking up because usually they're in some kind of collector. Yeah. Just going back to the game thing, I got The Witcher 3 Ooh. on vinyl. Ooh. 500 copies? I was going to say $500. Oh, wow. No, only 500 copies. I got it from one? a German site. Um, I was lucky, you know, and I, I waffled on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I looked at, when it went up for sale, I clicked on it and I was like, Ah, it's like fifty bucks. It might be more than five hundred later on. If there's only five hundred copies later on, it and might I said, be that you much. know, all right, I'll just click buy. So I clicked buy. You have? Um, a, do you have a vinyl player? A record player? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. I know it's like you just might collect it for the artwork and the prettiness. I don't know if you actually listen to it. <laughs> yes. Well, some of it I some of it I do, some of it I don't. Fight See? Club's a problem. The Fight Club vinyl that I own that yeah. Mondo produced. Um, was it Scratch or something? No, it's just uh, to open it up, <clears throat> there's a little tab on the thing. Oh, I had to break it? And it says destroy something beautiful. No. So you have to yeah, rip, rip it. open the thing no. in order to get to the vinyl, and I'm a little... You yeah. can't do it, no, can you? Can't. I'm a little hesitant I would. on that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. That, I mean, in case for that, like, I would just get like the CD. In case, like that, or case like that, you get two of them. Yeah. True. One you break, yeah, one you seal. Yeah. yeah. I'm never. I'm not that big on. I'm not that big on buying things double. You know. I'm gonna keep this one unopened and I'm gonna open this one up. I'm never. I've never been big on that. Um, How about games. No, no. I don't buy games to keep one sealed and then open up the other one type thing. But to play on one system and play on another. Um. Mm. Not that I can think of. It's happened before because they may send me a copy. Mm -hmm. Uh. And then I've got it like. I've got multiple copies of Last of Us Uncharted because they'll send me autographed copies. But in order to support them, I want to go out and buy um, the one. Or when they send them, it's going to be a while after the game releases before they can send me an autographed copy because mm -hmm. they got to send it around the office. So I'm not <laughs> waiting that long. So I'm going to go out and buy the game anyway. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. So, I mean, I do own multiples in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. But I've never been... I, like, I have Amiibos and I have the... the the Disney Infinity characters that I never opened out of the box, um, but I didn't buy two because I was never going to play them anyway. Yeah, never going to use have, them. So yeah, you only have one Disney Infinity character. I got like a couple. I, I got the Sorcerer's Apprentice. I got that one. Which Jack, is my favorite. I got that one in Jack Skellington, and yeah. I got Venom, and I got Black Suit Spider Man. I got Black Widow because it was the only way to get a Black Widow action figure for a while. At the time, yeah, it was. What are the rare ones well, of, those, of that collection? Girls actually enjoyed playing I don't action know. figures. I don't know what the Dying rare ones fire. are. Mm -hmm. I know that Amiibos have rare ones because they yeah. do, you know, first... Uh, like uh, the 8-bit Link I really want, yeah. but I can't find any more. But I don't know that the Disney Infinity characters ever had any rarities. I don't, I don't no. think so. And I wasn't buying them for the rarities, I was just buying them because I, those are yeah, my this favorites. Neat. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, so Did that's why the, I um, picked them up. the broom with the, uh, you know, the mop buckets? Not that I know of. I oh, see that. No, that would have been great to go with my Sorcerer's Apprentice. I I wanted a Chernabog, but they never oh. did a Chernabog either, so. I got a knitted Yoshi. That's all I, I got, wanted. That's the Amiibo side. I do have a knitted Yoshi, yes. Yeah. What color? Uh, mine's green. Yeah, I, I went with the classic. I went, yeah. I went I think, with the default the, Yoshi. I think some of the Amiibos you're going to have to import from Japan, mm -hmm. uh, the rare ones, if you want a full collection, I think. I go to, when I go to, the, when I go to PAX, when I go to, uh, well, PAX. <laughs> when I go to PAX, I don't go to E3 anymore. When I go to PAX, there are vendors, and yeah. it is just a wall of, of Amiibos amiibo. that they have. have. Hey, if, uh, when's PAX South? It's January. It's January. Oh, they no, haven't no. put tickets on sale yet for it. <laughs> well, what's the next PAX? PAX West, PAX Prime. Seattle. Okay, yeah. that, and that's uh, what uh, same time as Dragon Con, right? Labor Day weekend, yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you going to that? I am, yeah. I just uh, If you find a 8-bit uh, link... Oh, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'll look for that for you. Please. I, I promise you I will. You've <laughs> got to remind me, though, because I will okay. totally forget. Because I walk by those booths, and I look at that, and I'm like, glad I don't collect those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, not that I collect it, but like, I have my 8-bit Mario. that I, I, I love that one. It's just a really neat, you know, to see the 8-bit, you know, sprite in three dimensions. You know, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, no. 
I, uh, I, 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 that and Funko Pops and things oh, like that. Like, yeah, I'm glad, glad I, I don't do those anymore. <laughs> I only, I only, I've only bought one Funko Pop, but like the ones I've had have been given to me as you know gifts and stuff. So I have a couple of them. It's the same with me. I got gifted some Pac-Man ones. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll finish that collection do, out. Not yeah. on my own. I'll yeah. just say, if you want to get me something. Which one are you missing? I've only got uh, Pac-Man and I think the Red Ghost. I need. Uh, I think they've got three other ghosts yeah, and then yeah, a Blue yeah. Ghost and maybe a Miss Pac-Man. Yeah, I, th- I think that Miss Pac-Man. What, so I think I'm Pinky, missing like four more. Pinky and Clyde. Yeah, I think I'm missing four. And then they have a blue I know one. Clyde's orange. Yeah, they have a blue one. Um, so, uh, and not the blue one that is the light blue color. But the like actual the blue, actual, like the know, actual yeah, uh, power, power pellet. Yeah, after the yeah. power pellet. The scared ghost. They've got that one. Yeah, yeah the scared ghost is exactly mm-hmm. what that is. So anyway, back to my whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they released a uh, they released a sample of Zimmer's score. I'm a big fan of uh, film and video game <clears throat> scores. I'm a big fan of Zimmer's and have yeah. all the way back to Broken Arrow mm. and um, and and not even for some of his action things, but like um, Rain Man, True Romance. Um, he did uh, Backdraft. He did, um, he did Face Off and a couple of others. But he does some really good chase music. He yeah. did great chase music that I ripped from The Rock, that I ripped from Pirates of the Caribbean, which it doesn't sound like it's chase music. But let me tell you, when you put that as your soundtrack and you're playing Burnout, which the Xbox 360 would let you do, build your mm-hmm. own soundtrack. Yeah, you um, like really get that adrenaline going. It was going. fantastic to have that music in the background while I was doing a race in Burnout. It was wonderful, and it provided uh, it provided such a great soundtrack for that game. Yeah. And the other one was... Uh, what I mean, was like, there's there's another one. Classic composers. Yeah, the Zimmer, the Williams, <coughs> Horner. Yeah, he, did a, he did a track from Bad Boys that I grabbed, and that was another one that had great chase music in it, so it was always good. The, the Dunkirk thing, uh, that's not necessarily chase music, but boy, is it tension building. Massive tension building in that. And uh, I think I think it's fantastic the way he does things. So I'm a big fan of his. He's performing in Atlanta sometime this month. Ooh. I want to try and go to. It's on a Tuesday night though. Oh. I don't know that I can make it. In fact, I think it's not this coming Tuesday, but I think it's Tuesday after next. He'll be at the. Um, it's an outside venue in Atlanta, near Atlanta. Uh, Verizon Amphitheater, Verizon Wireless, Wireless Amphitheater. Okay. I think they've changed names on those. I think it has yeah. too. Yeah. But it's the amphitheater that he's going to be performing in. He's doing a live uh, performance there. Uh, I originally wanted to go so I could hear the uh, Man of Steel and the Wonder Woman track and uh, a couple of others that, that he's done. But now I'd love to hear that Dunkirk thing performed live. Did but, you see the Dunkirk preview before Wonder Woman? Yeah. yeah, yeah With, that had no music at all? None. None. That was that was an intense preview. Yes. It's been great. So... Hmm. So, uh, it did, so it didn't need any music to show you no, how. No, it was, I mean, and there wasn't much dialogue either. Like, mostly it was, the you heard a little snatches of conversation and then um, really heavy breathing from two stretcher bearers that were running trying to get somebody onto uh, a ship. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, it was one of the more impactful previews I've ever seen. Hmm. Welcome to Movie Talk. Um, <laughs> so I know. Yeah, we could. We could. We could expand if, and talk about movies if we wanted to. If I could see one composer, uh, just in general, it would be Danny Elfman. That'd be my, that'd be my one. I always wanted to see John, um, to see Williams perform. Saw him at uh, Celebration. Yeah. Was he performing though? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. No, the, he was there on stage and everything after, like you know, right after the end when they had all nice. the actors and Harrison. Then up with the screen, there's John Williams. The one in uh, the one they did in California. Orlando. Oh, the one they did just recently. Yeah, this year. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, that's you know for the fourth anniversary. That's why like all our minds were just blown collectively. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I was actually I was actually going to go up to to Boston and watch him perform, uh, and never did that. But yeah, they, it's rare that they do live performances. Yeah. So I figure I should catch those whenever they're around and near that I can do that with. So, um. Anyway, welcome to the show. <laughs> we'll get to it proper here in just a moment. Um. Yeah, so I was watching Spider-Man. Sarah sent me a text. I was like, yeah, come on. So, yes, I opened my phone during the movie. I don't care. Um, Are you one of those guys that just answer it, too? I won't talk. No. No, no, no. I'll get up and leave if I need to answer the phone. Um, otherwise, I'll see who it's calling and then send them a text. Be like, watch the movie. What's up? You know, <laughs> what's going on? 
So, um, but yeah, luckily it gets sent to my phone and I can yeah. check to see if it's an, any kind of emergency mm -hmm. there. So, um, but yeah, you're welcome anytime you want to come down. <laughs> Thank you. Always. Just give me a heads up. Doesn't even have to be 24 hour notice. Just let me know. <laughs> I'm um, at the door. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing over there? I'm making paper cranes. Oh, okay. How many have you made so far? Uh, two, four, six, eight. Oh, I got one. Yeah. Ten. Nice. I'm on number 11. I got the Purple Power Ranger. <laughs> Purple Power? That movie was horrible, by the way. Purple Power Ranger? No, Power Rangers. You mean the Krispy Kreme commercial? Yeah. You it's know, we the get, extended commercial. You we get right. uh, we get we get donuts here at the radio station on Wednesdays from Krispy Kreme to to give out to clients and things. So we have mm -hmm. big stacks of donuts. I'm so sorry. And um, from GNS as well. Uh, and so they came in boxes whenever this movie was out. Yeah, with the the and it had power. the power. And I was like, oh wow, I didn't know they were doing any kind of promotion. I didn't realize how heavily. Then you see the movie and then it's like, oh wow, that's uh, that nothing was, but. Heavily. There's product placement, then there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there like, did someone ever make a like a counter screen, like how many times Krispy Kreme showed up in this movie? Like someone in the bottom it's right a, corner. It's a, it is no. the greatest of them all. Like no, it is a it is a prime fixture in in the end film, in the end mm -hmm. of the in the end of the movie. Like they have to get to the Krispy Kreme in order to stop the thing from doing the thing, because apparently that's where. So Krispy Kreme is part of the plot. Yeah. yeah. Like, the thing that they're looking for is residing at a Krispy Kreme. So they have to, so Krispy Kreme has said so many, we got to get to the Krispy Kreme. It's yeah. over at the Krispy Kreme. Yeah. They don't even say donut shop. They call it a Krispy Kreme. Uh, That's kind of sad, actually. The greatest of them all. So, uh, enough with movie stuff. Yeah. Yes. Back into our video gaming thing, because we have a lot of talk, we have a lot to talk about with Sarah. Um, cause we <laughs> get to, really. we get, well, we get to get your opinions on things, sure. you know. So have you bought a PlayStation 4 yet? No. All right, never mind. E3. How did you uh, How did you like E3? Um, did e you watch much of E3? I did. Mostly, I was watching um, live blogs because I was at work during a lot of the uh, presentations that I cared about, uh, except for who was it, Bethesda, who was ridiculously late, late at night. Because yeah, that one was. I don't get up as early as you do, but I get up at five thirty in the morning, so that was not happening. Um. Ah, oh, well, at least I stayed up for that. But yeah, so I I watched uh, I watched EA. I managed to to tune in exactly at the right time to get to the stuff I cared about and skip most of the sports. Sports, sports, sports. Which this was who was this EA? Yeah, yeah. EA. Sports, okay. sports, sports. What did you care about in EA? Um, Start Battlefront. Battlefront and uh, mm. yeah, that was the main thing. I was gonna say you're really not much. There's EA had not much to show off other than sports and Battlefront. Yeah. Did. They they had a teaser for Anthem, right? A very, I mean, it yeah. wasn't. It was basically a teaser saying, "Watch Microsoft's <laughs> thing tomorrow for yes. more." Yes. Basically, Which I did. was all that was. Um. So yeah, uh, Bethesda, and then Microsoft. What did you think on Microsoft? Um. Again, I know that's what you have. You have an Xbox One. I do have an Xbox One. Um. That's all you have. That is all I have. Well, I have a 360 too. I know. <laughs> You don't have an Xbox One S, though. You have an Xbox One. No, I one. just have an Xbox okay. One. Um, again, I was excited to to see more about Anthem, which basically just looks like Destiny meets Titanfall, but that could be okay. Um, well, we know we know one. Th well, I say we know this. We won't really know more until they actually lay it out for us. But we know that um, uh, you can co-op with four people. Yes. Which is instead of at least four people, instead of just three. That I, I, I know that they had, were very pertinent on making sure that was shown <laughs> because Destiny has three, but we give you four. Four is bigger than three, therefore we're better. <laughs> mm. I, maybe, I don't know, but how many times have I been playing Destiny that I wish I could bring in a fourth person? Yeah. Or that we've had to split up, you know? So uh, it's something I wish they did fix for Destiny 2, but they're not going to do it. Yeah, I it doesn't bother me as much because I have exactly two people that I play Destiny with. <laughs> over on on the Xbox side. You could have more. I could, maybe. You could. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I as I we were talking in the the chat room uh a while ago that my my gaming budget is very tight these days, so I saw a lot of stuff that I was like, eh, I'll be interested to see other people play that, mm -hmm. but um. 
but there were no no must haves coming out of it. Yeah, I I'm not uh, I'm not big on it either. They revealed the specs for the Xbox One X, or, mm-hmm. or not necessarily the specs, but they revealed uh, benchmarks. Also, worst name ever. Xbox mm-hmm. One X. Yes. yes. I'm I'm not. I just prefer to call it Scorpio. Yeah. Honestly, um, but they revealed the specs for that, and uh, it's not doing native 4K for your games. Yeah. It is not. Uh, it's doing a checkerboard thing to get it to get it across for 4K. Mm. Um, but who said 4K it, wouldn't really have a priority, really, right now? Is it? It seems to of, be for the console makers. Yeah, but it seems to be for Sony and, and Microsoft. Yeah, but for television owners, I mean, 4K isn't like readily. Yeah, no. I mean, the content for 4K is lacking. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But you can't really buy a TV now that isn't 4K. Mm, okay. You can't go out and buy a new TV. Even on lower specs, you know, even on something that's like, well, I don't need a, I don't need a big 55 or 65 inch, I need a 40 inch. Well, they make yeah. 40 inch 4K TVs for around 500, 600 bucks, or you know, yeah. a little bit less than that price yeah, of a at, console, apparently now. Yeah, I'm at a, I'm at 40, 42 right now on my screen now, but it's six, seven years old. Yeah. I, so I got a 45, work, so, yeah. but I want to get a higher one. Yeah. They have some. Decent prices on last year's models at the BX at you know like six hundred dollars for a four K. Yeah, typically what I do is like go the previous year, the previous previous uh, session back. You know, yeah. not like yeah. top and line, but yeah, four K is um four K as far as your TV set is concerned, uh, that that's where it's going. Mm-hmm. Uh, Content's not there for, or at least a mass amount of content. Like the is not PS4 there. doesn't do four K, but the Pro does. right? The Pro does four K. Yes, yeah. the Pro does four K, and the Xbox One S does. Some 4K, it's it's at least a 4K Blu-ray player. So if you've got movie discs and stuff, yeah. you can watch in 4K, and it does it flawlessly and fantastically. And you have no reason to buy the massive uh, priced 4K Blu-ray players that are standalone when yeah. you can just buy a console that does it. In fact, if you don't even play games, it's, still it's cheaper. <laughs> worth it for you to just to pick up an Xbox One S. Yeah. Uh, if for all if, the other stuff it does. for your home theater, yeah. yeah. So it's still 200, right? 200, 250, I think, yeah, probably, yeah. around there somewhere, you know. And and that's another thing to go on is uh, the Xbox One X and the hard drive space. They're still only giving you a terab. Well, they're upping it up now to a terabyte of hard drive space. Mm-hmm. But for Forza Motorsport Seven is a hundred gigs already. Yeah, I heard wow. that. One game, a hundred gigs. Yeah, that's before patches. Yeah, before DLC. That's before any DLC, but the patches that they may have to put into this thing. Who knows what, how else, or how bigger the other games are going to be, mm-hmm. uh, and how much, you know. It's 100 gigs. You'll probably, whatever the disc has on it probably won't be 100 gigs, but when you put it in the system, it downloads 100 downloads gigs. Downloads the rest of it. Because that's yeah. how these games work now. You don't yeah. play off the disc anymore. The disc is just your licensing fee so that it tells the distributor that you can download this now. And so it downloads yeah. the thing to your to your console. How about the uh, external, external hard drives? Like for the PlayStation, they had that... Uh, Patch where you can put in a eight terabit hard you drive can. external. You can do that. You can still? you can do external hard drives on your on your Xbox One X. Yes. Okay. At least so did you got that. I mean yeah. that's that's available, but for people who don't want to do that, you're still they're still limiting hard drive space on these things is ridiculous the way that they do them, the way they do them. Um, I mean they'll offer when the Xbox One S and and. Just when the consoles come out, they started at 500, right. and then they had terabyte options. Yeah. Um, so they had different SKUs, and I think they'll yeah. do the same thing. I think they're moving now to where the default is going to be a terabyte because the Pro comes with a terabyte, the yeah. PS4 Pro, and now the Xbox One X comes with a terabyte default by yeah. default. There is no lower than that yeah. that you can get. But the PS4, you know, <clears> your <throat> PS4 normally, you know, you have the folks who put their own hard yeah. drives in there, like I did, the two, ter- two terabit in mine. Same here. Yeah, same here. But... Um, there are people who won't do that, though. There are people who, you got to think of Johnny Consumer, I guess. I mean, you know I what I'm saying? That. I get that, yeah. Um, who won't go that far to extend the 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 capacity capacity of your of of your console. Yeah. Um, and so now that terabyte is starting to move into the default of of what these consoles will offer, mm-hmm. you'll start seeing SKUs. And I don't know if it's going to be one and a half as the second tier, or if they're going to jump it up to two as the second tier. I want to say jump it up to two. You want to. I want to say jump it up to two. You want to, but (laughs) again, they're throwing out games. There's uh, Lethal Migraine says Halo 5 is around 100 gigs, and I know that they're going to put that, um, they're going to, they're going to, 
make that compatible with Xbox One X as far as doing uh, doing uh, 4K and HDR and that sort of thing. So I don't know if that'll increase that at all or not, the, the space on that. So it's just going to get bigger. Um, yeah. The games are going to require more space and... It's still okay. I mean, I look at it a lot like Steam, where I have a ton of Steam games. They're just not all installed. Mm -hmm. I have them because I don't have the space to install them on my mm -hmm. computer. Um, same thing for your your consoles, really. I have a have mm -hmm. you know I can go out and buy the games and then just install them as I want to play them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but a lot of people don't like to delete things from their console. Yeah. I didn't yeah. want to say hard drive because people on PC are throwing things away <laughs> left and right. It's fine. Just so I could install, you know, something else. Yeah. I mean, that's I did how that. I was like as soon as I uh, started uh, Dishonored 2, I I uninstalled one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I did that just recently cuz you and I went back and did the DLCs for Dishonored. Uh, and as soon as I was done with the DLC for Dishonored, I I took it off my system and then put yeah. in and then installed Dishonored 2. Yeah. Uh, I did the same thing for Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of Yeah. Shadow of War. Shadow, Shadow of War. War. War's the next, the new one coming out. Oh, is it? The, yeah. One, the, yeah. one, the one before this. I just right. had to take yeah. off uh, Fallout 4 so I could install Shadow of Mordor to try it during the free for, free play days. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's free right now, I think, on Xbox One. It is so I So I uninstalled Shadow of Mordor when I got done, when I finished that up. I was like, all right, mm -hmm. take it off the system. Yeah. Didn't need it. Not because it was taking up space. It really wasn't. But it, it's, it's better to be... Uh, it's better to be more efficient that way, <laughs> so that things just don't sit there that you're not doing and just take up space. So, yeah. um, but uh, console people don't like to do that too much. I know I don't like to do it very much. I I've dread done it like once or twice. There's two. I think there's. Uh, let's see. Let it die. I took off my console because I saw where it was going, saw the direction it was going. I decided to get out of it. That and the thing was swelling up ridiculously in terms of uh, how much it was taken up off the hard drive. And let's uh, let's uh, let's remember here. Like I dread taking Batman: Arkham Knight and all the DLC off of my PS4 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's a bunch of space and the amount of time it took to download from the crap <laughs> network that is PSN. Yeah, that and like some stuff. Like I have uh, I have um, Silent Hill uh, the the PT. That you know, I think once you if you if I were to take that off my hard drive, yeah, you can't get it. You can't get it, yeah. you can't get it back. There is yeah. there is things like that. But uh, the network involved to get those games back when you download them, yeah. PSN is horrible. Yeah, PlayStation Network. I'm not. I can't say as much for Xbox because uh, a lot of times with the free game things, I'm on the internet when I go. I'm, I'm on a browser page and I'm like, ooh, add that to cart, add that to cart because it's free mm -hmm. right. for the games with gold. It It'll automatically sends it, it and it yeah. just down, and so when next time I turn on my Xbox, it's oh hey we downloaded this while you're already away. in there for you. Yeah. yeah, I know that they can do that on PS. Uh, I know they can do that on PlayStation Four. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be done on PlayStation Four. I think but even on Steam, you could uh, remote uh, install. Their network is horrible to download things from. Yeah. yeah. The PlayStation Network it is just repulsive. So that's the, the other reason that I don't like to delete things off of my console because downloading yeah, them again takes I, forever. Yeah, because I took a. Uh, I'm gonna have to. During the uh, mid uh, mid July sale for uh, PlayStation Network, I mean, I, I bought one game. It was like 2.8 gigs. That was about 45 minutes. What'd you buy? Uh, Strike Vector EX. Okay. It was on sale, and I bought that and uh, installed it. But yeah, that was about an hour. 45 minutes to an hour to so get all that in there. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to take off my hard drive so I can install um, Until Dawn because that came out on the free mm -hmm. for this month and I really want yeah. to play that. I already had that on... Uh, I don't know what the size on that one is, but you should be all right. Um, anyway, we've got to take a break. We're, we're over our time here. A lot of the songs that we got for this week came from Sarah herself. Uh, I asked for suggestions since I knew she was going to be on. And so we uh, we got her suggestions. This is one as well. The track, she basically gave me some game names, and I just pulled tracks from that. Uh, there were a few. A couple you asked for had vocals and stuff, and I tried to veer gotcha. away from that. Um, plus, I think you're right. We already played the Dragon Age Origins one, so I pulled another track from that. So uh, Here is Mass Effect 3. The track is called Mars, and we'll be back with more of In Game Chat right after this.
Welcome back to In Game Chats. Uh, I'm Scott, along with Matt, Sarah, RJ. This is music from a game called Arizona Sunshine. The track is called It's All Gone. Arizona Sunshine it has been on PC for a while now as a VR title, and it has now been ported over to PlayStation VR. Is that a zombie game? Yeah, it is. I was about to say, it sounds suspenseful. Um, yeah. It is. It's a stand in one place and shoot zombies, and then I think you can teleport to other spots around the map and then shoot at zombies that are coming at you. Okay. So, one of those kind of games for you. Uh, anyway, welcome back. We were talking about uh, we were talking about the Xbox One S and 4K and things like that, and and how the uh, the specs for the Xbox One X um, or the benchmarks anyway. Um, they show promise. Uh, they're not. They're still not delivering true 4K content. And then, of course, there's all the problems with if they are even able to do that. How are they going to manage uh, disk space? Um, how are they going to? Um, how are they going to make it across everything? They did say that the boost up from the Xbox, um, from the 360 games, the Xbox original games, the Xbox One games, all the boosts that it's going to get whenever you put it into an Xbox One X will be massively significant uh, and and look really, really good. They won't be delivering true 4K, of course, because they weren't built for 4K, but uh, they will look better uh, when you play them on an Xbox One X. Still not a reason for me to spend $500 on a console. Um, I remember when the Xbox One was released with the Kinect in it. Mm -hmm. That was $500. And I remember... <sighs> It wasn't even. It may have been six months later when they dropped. They, uh, they didn't. They would have a sale on. It's like okay, now it's four hundred fifty. Then they. It was six months later when they dropped the Connect out of it. Mm -hmm. Said hey, now we have the and Connectless Xbox One. Uh, so you can pick that up for and it knocked a hundred dollars off the machine. You can pick it up for four hundred bucks without a Connect. So, I'm just gonna bide my time on this Xbox One X and see where it drops from there as far as the. As far as the price, so I won't get one unless my Xbox One dies. I, I don't does, even need you one. Get a PS4. Yeah, I don't even need one. I have a 4K TV. So I mean, that's uh, honestly that'll be the next thing Good that thing. I move to. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if, when I, when it comes to it, you know, I'm not going to be looking at picking up an Xbox One X. I'll be looking to pick up a 4K TV. And at least what 85 inches. Somewhere, I mean, that's going to start at 85. We'll go from there. You know, 85 for the Maybe just the bedroom, right. and then, you know. Just like a wall of, was it like a uh, total recall? Get a 115 for the den. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, no, actually, I don't go, uh, 65 is good. For the bedroom, 65 is fine. Um, for the living room, I could go big on that. You know, it's I got a 70, 71, I think, or 73. Uh Probably go bigger there if I wanted to, but I just don't do much in the in the living room anymore. I I just I straight to the bedroom because it's so much more easier to just lay in bed and play games than it is to like sit in the living room and play games. I like it so much better that way, and I've got all my stuff hooked up to it. So if I'm done playing games, I can sit there and watch Netflix and fall asleep if I want to. Speaking of Castlevania, Castlevania, I watched that last night. Yes. Four episodes. That's all you get. I was kind of sad. Four 30-minute episodes. You can watch it fast. Yeah. Uh, I have not watched any of it yet, but I do plan on doing that. I enjoyed it. So, I'm glad you did. I actually, I mean, I felt bad for Dracula. <laughs> uh, the creator of that actually has talked about doing an Assassin's Creed uh, anime now. Not, don't know if that's going to be for Netflix, but he was approached by Ubisoft and said, we'd like you to work on our Assassin's Creed franchise for an anime original story, not picking anybody from the, um, the that we've, uh, that we've of, seen. You know. Yeah. Like I'm done with Ezio. Loved him, <laughs> but I feel like I've lived his life. We, 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 yeah. we were there when he was born and we were there when he died and we went through a bunch of stuff in between. We good. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to, I don't need to discover any more about him. Uh, so I'm fine with him bringing in somebody else. Uh, as far as a new character to to tell a story in that realm, um, so uh, anyway, let's talk. Do I want to talk about Destiny? No. <laughs> well, it's so rare that Sarah's here, and I can actually talk about Destiny and how much I want her to switch over to PS4. But the beta is coming up. It is. 
It's not this week, but it's next week. And it's, she won't switch over to the PS4. Yeah, it's not. I understand that. I'm not going to push her to do that anymore. It's fine. Um, I mean, I could pre-order the game on Xbox One and then play because it's a fresh start for everybody, right? Yes. But I don't want to own three copies of this game. It's bad <laughs> enough that I own two copies on one system, as it is right now for Destiny 1. I own two copies of Destiny 1 as well. You had to get it digitally, right? Yeah, well, I got it initially on the 360, actually. Oh, I see. Uh, and so then I picked it up digitally on the Xbox One with... I pre-ordered the Taken King expansion, mm -hmm. and so that ended up being a lot cheaper yeah. than getting the base game. And I I picked up uh, I had owned it for on disc forever, and then they had a flash sale on PSN. And I grabbed the uh, I grabbed the digital version because that was just I mean, if we're gonna go lazy on this, <laughs> yes, the fact that I don't have to get up and change a disc anymore, that's again, yeah, digital Plus, future is in my the is in my version, life. correct? I have, yeah, well, that's, a, that, okay, physical copy, there you go, there's something <laughs> well, that I bought, bought that I kept, open. that I did not open, mm -hmm. it was the ghost version of Destiny, hmm. um, that was one I did not open, they did not make any more of those things, I felt like they would, and if they had, I probably would have opened it up, but they never did, I, I, when I got in on that on the Amazon page, and then they never updated it with more stock, mm -hmm. I was like, oh. I, I figured they would, and if they had done that, if they had made it more readily available, I probably wouldn't have cared and just opened mine up, but they never did, and so I kept that thing sealed. Um, but, you know, now I'm at a... I've got to pre-order it. I've mm -hmm. got to, so I can play the beta, and I haven't done that yet. Mine is pre-ordered. Yeah, I have not done that yet, and the beta starts uh, a week from, well, a week from Tuesday mm -hmm. is when it starts. And I'm just trying to see, let's see, I've got the list of everything that we can expect. Um, it's going to be a lot smaller than the Destiny 1 beta. It is. It goes from, oh, I see, the open beta is from the 21st to the 23rd. The people who pre-order will get early access to the beta on July 18th on the PS4. One day earlier than you Xbox folks, <laughs> July 19th <laughs> is when Xbox One people can play uh, their early access of the beta. So for most people, it's the 18th and 19th through the 23rd um, with the open beta on the 21st through the 23rd. We will get the opening mission and cinematics from Destiny 2's campaign, something that we've probably all seen plenty of times now because that's <laughs> the only thing they've really shown off. We will get the brand new Crucible Mode Countdown and Control. Control we're very familiar with. Countdown is the only Crucible thing they've shown off, so we know what to expect there. Countdown I don't care about, man. That for, uh, you, you, did, you didn't do Crucible stuff, but... Uh, I did a little bit. Yeah. Well, you probably did um, the Iron... Uh, uh, I mostly did Iron Banner. Iron Banner, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking Iron Hammer, Iron <laughs> Man. What is it? Um... Yeah, Iron Banner stuff, but uh, Countdown is just Elimination. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. uh, with a little bit of a, a a tweak on the gameplay, but it's still eliminate the other team, regardless of if they set off the bombs or anything like that. If you eliminate all the, the entire team, you still win. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, what else do we get? We get a Strike, the Inverted Spire, which is one I've watched the entire way through. That was a kind of an... A new way to do strikes. I don't want to say a new way. It was um. It was a way. There was more to it, you know. There was there was there was more things going on in the strike. Um, environmental things you had to watch out for and stuff like that, which was kind of nice to see. Uh, you'll get the new subclasses. The new fighting style for each mm -hmm. class will be at the ready. Choose from the Dawnblade Warlock, the Arc Strider Hunter, or the Sentinel Titan, and. This is interesting. We won't have access to the farm, which is the hub space. Right. Have you seen that? Did you watch that video? No. The hub space now is a farm. Uh, literally, it is yeah. a farm. Um, for testing purposes only, we will get one hour to mess around in it. Yep. It's on, the stress test. Yeah, on July 23rd. Oh, yeah. So that's uh, we can kick the ball into the net. We can befriend a chicken, as they say. This is what the <laughs> thing's telling me. Most vendors and services will be offline. Again, this area will mainly be open for stress testing in order to see how many players it can accommodate at once. Uh, so, yeah. I am so making a chicken friend. It's not that much, honestly. 
No. You get the opening mission, and then you get uh, some Crucible stuff and a strike. That's okay. pretty much all you get. And nothing, of course, carries over. If you do participate in the beta, you'll get an emblem mm-hmm. that will carry over. But progress and stuff like that, none of that will carry over for you. Yeah, so. but with Destiny 1, they put so much in the beta that then when people got the game, they were like, oh, we've played all this. True. So. I guess they kind of want to hold back, but... Uh, I'm curious what the level cap would be if it's just going to start with, like, here you go, your level, whatever. There's, everybody's this, nobody increases or decreases. Mm-hmm. You just start, you're going to start off here, go play, have fun. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to how they're gonna do that. They haven't talked about it. But I've got to pre-order this game so I can get into the beta um, and see where I'm going to be with it. Uh, PC, did you do you have are you looking at possibly playing this on PC? No, I I still I have not kinda... built mine, so okay. my little laptop would just cry. All right, that was what I was going to get at. Is like, what are you playing PC wise as far as like what do you what's your rig, what's your gear? It's a laptop. <laughs> it is a six year old Toshiba laptop. Okay. Yeah. Because I know I bought you I some ju- games. You have. I can't play some of them. Oh, really? Oh, well, what? I mean, like, there's no way my, my laptop can play City Skylines. Did I buy you that one? You did. Oh, man. So. And now it's out on Xbox One, and it's out on PS4. I know. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to rethink what I'm going to do for you on, on Christmas this year as far as, like, what games <laughs> I'm going to get you. Because now, knowing your PC thing, it's so easy to give games yeah. on Steam than it yeah. is anywhere else. Uh, uh, Xbox is looking into doing gifting mm-hmm. games. Uh, PS4 not so much, but I know the Xbox, uh, Microsoft is looking at it for some time in the future. I didn't include yeah. that in my list of things because somebody tweeted him and said, how's that coming along? And the guy said, <laughs> working on it, that's all. Yeah. And somebody made a news story out of it. Working on it. So, um, yeah. Uh, so... That's what we've got for Destiny. The beta is coming up. <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. I, there's, there's, that's it. Um, STM Fuller says you should just give all my games to him. Oh, just give the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, I bought Moltal some games this summer for the Steam sale. Did you pick anything up during the Steam sale? Probably yeah. not. Um, but yeah, I'm curious how he's been playing those and if he's been playing those. Uh, I think he's in the chat room. Let's see who is all in the chat room. Who was room earlier? Here. Let it refresh real quick, and I'll go over these names. We've got uh, AC Wraith, Biosec One, C Crez, Lethal Migraine, Raspy Salamander, which is a fantastic name. Scotch is awesome. That's a <laughs> fantastic name. I love that name. I'm gonna bump that guy up to moderator status just for the name alone. <laughs> uh, STM Fuller and Tactus Fifty Nine are uh, hanging out in the chat room together. So thank you guys for joining us on uh, this Saturday. We're getting calls all over the place now, aren't we? All right, who was on line one? 42. I'm sorry, say it again. 42. 42. And uh, real quick before we do that, uh, accident on 65 northbound uh, near mile marker 200, Verbena has traffic backed up. Oh, all right. Is that, uh, that's that's in your direction, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. You should probably you just hang around. <laughs> just I live through, here I'm now. Sure, I'm, I'm sure an hour it might be cleared. You've yeah. just been through one of those long delays. Yeah, we six hours earlier. to get home the last time I was up here. Or down here. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, just do do a dinner thing after the show, <laughs> and then hopefully traffic will be open for you. Hopefully. Um, all right, 42's on one, so let me hit the phones then. Talk to... Hey, 42, you're on in game chat with us. All right, cool. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How are y'all? Not We're bad. good. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. I'm I'm gonna tell everybody about a game I like. It's on mobile now, so. Oh, it's a mobile y'all game. Y'all probably like. Y'all are probably like. I don't care how good it is. It's it's on mobile, so no. Nah. No, you can tell us about a mobile. We don't we don't really play much mobile games, and but you're more than welcome to tell us about one. But it's a it's a good game. It's called Need for Speed No Limit. Okay. Y'all yeah, play Need for Speed on my PlayStation, yeah. And it's it's a good game overall. I mean, it's a drag racing game on the on the console. You can play as a cop as well, chase drag racers. But in in local, you can only you can you can only play as a drag racer. What is the what do you do on the mobile game? Do you just drag race and then like collect money and then you know uh, tweak your car settings and stuff? Uh, I gotta go. Bye. 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 I gotta, I gotta go. Run. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you gotta go, you gotta go. 
Uh, Chris is on, too. Hey, Chris. What's going on, y'all? Hey, hey. Oh, not much. How are you? Well, if that wreck's still on 65, you might have to take 31 on the way back then. Yep. You can do that. Uh, you know, it's, what time is it? It's 4.55. You should be fine. Um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be all right. Oh, yeah, as long as no, nothing spilled. Yeah. Day, so you'll be good on that. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it'll be, uh, I think it'll be done for you. Uh, Chris, what's going on with you, man? Same as usual, playing my Necro on Diablo 3. That's right, Diablo 3 with their, their DLC that they released. Still doing that, huh? Oh, yeah, I'm loving it. Uh, yeah, the, from what all the different builds I've seen that you could, I've looked up about getting the different set items to do this. Uh, of course, uh, any of y'all else play it? I know you hadn't played it, uh, Scott, but has anybody else played the old series or any of the other ones? I have. Do you remember the uh, the bone armor from the second one for the oh, next yeah. row that spun around him? Yeah, I used well, to play the next one. And this one, uh, normally it would just cover your body like, you know, you just pull the bones out of the, their enemies and they would cover you like in a, a bone armor. Mm -hmm. But there's a set that actually brings back the old spinning bones around you and it deals damage. And it's insane the amount of damage it does. And I've seen people going through, you know, they just walk around, you know, and then just starts killing enemies everywhere. Just It's nuts. So I'm working on getting toward that set so I can do that and have a lot more fun. But, yeah, it's been a blast. Well, I hope you're having, I was going to say, I hope you're having fun right now. Yeah. Taking a break from doing riffs and killing stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically that's occupying your attention. Anything else? Uh, that's it for right now. And in, a bit, uh, in, a, in another couple of days, I'll be getting that big collector's edition of uh, Final Fantasy XII that uh, Square is about to release. Okay. Mm -hmm. What comes in that? Yeah. Oh, I have to look up again and see, but it was pretty expensive. Uh, you want me to come in uh, a week or two down the road and show it off on the show or something? Well, let like me know that. when. Yeah, let me know when you get it. Yeah, let me know when you get it. Yeah, it's already shipped, so it should be, you know, at least by next weekend. If not, but I'll let you know. Wasn't twelve a PS2 game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but the, Square Enix goes back and does these things. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I'm just trying to remember which one of the games it was. And... In fact, yeah, I, I remember uh, when this one. I remember when they talked about this one being released, and I was actually kind of interested in picking it up, not for playing purposes, just for because of the collector's edition with it. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, set in Inverness, right? I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, twelve. Uh, no, and tw uh, was, yeah, twelve was the one uh, that kind of felt like an MMO, but as a single player game, and you you set the commands. You know, uh, the characters do this on certain certain circumstances. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the one that that they they remade. All right, yeah, I remember that one. And I don't ever get too far into it, so that's another opportunity to you know to pick back up on it and see what it news about it and all. But one of the things I saw online on a video that the entire music is done by a live orchestra. Hmm. So they recorded. Cool. They recorded it. They recorded. How did they? How were they? How did they? Live orchestra. Yeah, come to your house. all the music in the game is from a live orchestra playing the music for them when, and then recorded them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that sounds awesome. But from what I, I can't wait to hear that. But this was called the uh, the Zodiac Age, Chris, the Collector's Edition. That's it. Okay. Yeah, I was pulled up. Uh, pulled up some things on it. Let's see. It says the uh, it says the game itself comes with a Judge Magister's mini bus set. It seems like five little collectible figures in here, or five characters here. A uh, soundtrack from the game from composer Hitoshi Sakimoto. A steel book featuring art exclusive to the collector's edition. A set of six art cards uh, featuring various characters from the game and the world of uh, Ivalice. Uh, digital code to unlock the original soundtrack background music option in game. Released uh, the 11th of July. So, yeah. Looks like a lot comes in here. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Well, Chris, we appreciate you calling in, man. All right. Well, y'all have a good one, and I'll contact you, uh, Scott, when I. When I, that comes in. Yeah, just let me know. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care. All right. We're going to go into a uh, top of the hour break here. Nate's in the chat room. Thanks for uh, showing up. I just wanted to tell him he's talking about maybe he's going to be coming back on the show. So just mm -hmm. remind him to bring my PSVR back. <laughs> he has had it for oh many a month now. Uh, I don't know how many. Hopefully he's enjoyed you know playing it. I don't even know. I know he. 
I want to hear his thoughts. Basically, that was the whole thing mm-hmm. was for him to bar it. And I said, next time you come back, you can bring the you can bring the PSVR back, and then we'll get your thoughts on it yes. and how you enjoyed it. So hopefully, we can have him back on and, and talk about that. We're going to go to a break now. When we come back more in game chat. If you want to get on the show and and be a caller like forty two and Chris there three three four two seven two nine two two eight is the number. Uh, next song. This is not one of Sarah's picks because. <laughs> Well, I had one from a recently released game, which was Arizona Sunshine. I said, hey, Sarah, I need six more if you can. She gave me five. Uh, So I had to pick one more. So after this one, it's Sarah's playlist after this one. (laughs) Uh, This is the music from Don't Starve Together. It's the main theme for that. Uh, Interesting little game if you've never played it before. Uh, We'll be right back with Morning Game Chat after this. And welcome back to In Game Chat. And now the music kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> music here from Dragon Age Origins. It's called The Proving Grounds. I'm Scott. We've got RJ, Sarah, and Matt here with us this afternoon. And a bunch of people in the chat room that I've already talked about. Nate's in the chat room now. Uh, Faye Gwent joined us. Orco83. Orco, I like that. Yeah, have joined us in the chat room as well. Welcome back to the show. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can. 334-272-9228 is the number. 334-272-9228. Nintendo did a Nintendo Direct this week with uh, Splatoon 2 being the focus. Okay. Uh, But they also talked about their phone app. Sorry. Uh, they talked about the phone app that they're releasing for the Nintendo Switch. It's a horrible idea. Well, you um, can take one of the little controllers and use it as a phone? Hmm? No. <laughs> what? I don't know. No, no, no. It's the app. It's This is how you're going to... Uh, this is how you're going to communicate in online play is through your phone. I don't know how. There is some peripheral that uh, some third market company is making... Our third, uh, what am I trying to think of? Um, an app? It's an outside market, or an outside company that's making it. Not a Nintendo official, but... Um, third party. Third party. Yeah. Third third party. That's what I was trying to think of. Third market. Third party. <laughs> third world market thing. Trickle no, down. it's a third party that's making it. High quality. Is it going to be like a iPhone, Android? Yeah, it's, it's going to be iPhone and Android. Um, Windows phone? <laughs> I guess I really don't know no much, care. but it's horrible. Yeah, <laughs> like they, they don't have any kind of community. You know how we use headsets on our PS4 and our Xbox One. We use yeah. headsets. PC. We use headsets. They don't have any thing like that for the Nintendo Switch. So just use your phone. So your phone is going to somehow interact with the Switch, and that's how you can communicate over multiplayer games with like your team and stuff but i don't know how that works i'm gonna go with mm-hmm. no i really don't know how it's gonna work discord i don't know well i mean you can do discord yeah yeah um i mean yeah but if you're already yeah if you're already using your phone then there's better apps out there 
Yeah, it's it's not looking good. I I, I think it's a horrible idea. Uh, do we have any headphones set up? Huh? Do we have any uh, headphones set up? I don't no. know how the Wii did no. communication over games. I don't really think they did communications over ga- communication over games. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Really? I would think a game like a uh, Smash and Mario Kart, something like that, you'd be having a lot of that'd be a good opportunity to be uh, talking through that. I don't think they did anything with it. I really don't. I don't remember. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a Wii U mm. uh, until after <laughs> until after that thing uh, mm-hmm. until they stopped production on that thing. So I didn't have a Wii U. I didn't have a Wii long enough to really care. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know how they did that. But regardless, they're trying to do it with the phone app. It's also going to keep track of, as far as Splatoon 2 is concerned, it's going to keep track of your statistics in the game. Uh, it will keep track of, you know, when you set dates for, hey, we're going to play tonight, tournaments, things like that. Um, the, the way the game rotates out maps and, and things like that, it will mm-hmm. keep you updated on those things and what's going on inside the game. Uh, that sort of thing. So it'll be a nice app for for that game, and it's cool that it's doing that. Uh, I think the Destiny app is one of the great things that they've got for for that. And there's a lot yeah. of third party apps that interact with Destiny mm-hmm. uh, that are great. The public event trackers were right. I have no great. problem with any of those. Just using this though as your main way to communicate between players vocally um, seems horrible just doesn't seem like it should work so we'll see it's nintendo they've surprised me before with things i I don't expect to get surprised with this though Mm -hmm. what else did we find out uh cuphead is strictly a microsoft product man (laughs) somebody had asked them if it would ever be coming to ps4 and they said nope never not so much it is a never gonna happen type of thing reminds me of titanfall Mm-hmm. Like Titanfall, Xbox exclusive. Titanfall 2, everybody gets to play it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what they're... Uh... Are you interested in Cuphead at all? Yeah. It's a tough I little, like, it's like tough little game. Uh, it might be up your alley there, RJ, but you don't, maybe. You don't have an Xbox One. Nope. Is it coming out on PC? It will get a PC release. So then that's how... Yeah, 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 been, yeah. That's how You're still building your PC, right? Yeah, I'm looking for uh, uh, spare hard drives on the thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you got left to do on it? Uh, uh, outside two, of building uh, let's it. See, well, two hard drives. Uh, two hard drives, power supply. I found one that I'm looking into. Uh, case fans, and that's pretty much it. So you've already got your card, your graphics card. Yeah. You already got your processor. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. You're you're. You got the yeah, big the stuff. Break. Yeah, you the got break, the yeah. big stuff out of the way now. Yeah, that's what that was the first thing I wanted to get. The well, the first thing I wanted to get was a case, then to get the, uh, the big stuff out. Yeah, of it. So, yeah, yeah. got to have something to put it all in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Although uh, Jeremy once used a um, subway box. Yeah, I've seen I've seen those uh <laughs> those weird builds like uh, someone used a banker's box, a cereal box, yeah. a pizza box. I've seen that done before. A uh, box of raisin bran. Someone did that as well. Yeah. Yeah, at least migraines. It's been four years. My interest in Cuphead has faded. I agree, man. This thing, I have seen Cuphead at so many events yeah. that I really thought it was just never going to make it to release. Mm-hmm. It finally got a release date, and I'm still a little sketchy on that. them hitting that date. Yeah. Sometime in September, I'm still like, it might get pushed Maybe. back. It might get pushed back. They seem to be ready to go with it, but I played a little bit of it. I played a lot of it, actually, over the course of seeing it plenty of different times. Mm-hmm. Difficult little game. It really actually got... Uh, I, I don't know what setting I was playing it on, if it was set difficult or something like that, to a hard mode type thing, but it, it was difficult. Difficult to the point that I wasn't having fun. Little demo thing, right? Typically, yeah. Typically, yeah. typically demos are just set to like one difficulty anyway, right? Yeah, but I... Normal I, or whatever. I loved the animation. Obviously, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful game to look at, mm-hmm. just for the animation alone. Not so much a fun game to play, though, mm-hmm. for me. I so think what, a lot of people will love it, but what exactly was the uh, what made it difficult for you? What was it just the uh... we were flying planes, mm-hmm. a little cartoon planes, and it was it was kind of a bullet hell thing, okay, that we were doing, and I was just I died a bunch, one hit and done. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, comes um, so fragile. Hmm. 
airplanes too. Apparently. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't enjoy myself with it. Mm. So, okay. uh, what else? Let's see. Five Nights at Freddy's six got canceled even before mm. we knew it was coming out. Huh. Yeah. Um, what's that guy's name? Uh, Scott Coffin. Coffee. Yeah. Coffin. Yeah. Some. Anyway, Coffin. Phil Fifi. I don't know. Yeah. Scott had uh, put something up there saying that, uh, hey, I'm working on Five Nights at Freddy's 6, but I'm going to stop working on it now <laughs> and not work on it anymore. Good. Uh, why good? I don't know. Just I they, think... they, they had a trying to scare you, didn't they? Huh? huh? Did you play it? <laughs> they had a trying to scare you, didn't they? You played the first one? Yeah. Just, I mean, they just seem to be like the same thing over and over and over and over. There was some interesting lore behind it. I don't know yeah. about the I don't know about the yeah, circles and I don't, stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if uh, Scott uh, intended to have. Yeah, I think there's more I think people was like digging ske- into skeptic- it. Than... I think it was like uh, they speculated a lot and they mm-hmm. got this big yeah. world out of it. It's out of out of the whole uh, thing. What did you from someone who did play two, three, four? Well, I played uh, one, a little bit of two. Yeah. Oh, you never even went further. I didn't go. I didn't that? get uh, three, or four. I played played one, a little bit of two. Sarah, did you touch any of those? I didn't. Although, okay. weirdly, uh, in upcoming book catalogs, there are a ton of Five Nights at Freddy's books coming yeah. out yeah. for kids. Like, yep. lore, lore stories, right? So yeah. many. And they're making a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're making a movie about it as well. So, it's it's still riding high. It's not really going to go anywhere. But I was curious to think what people thought from one to two to three to four. If mm-hmm. if it did, if it was doing all the same thing. How did it switch it up? Why was it, you know, why? People loved one, so that warranted a two. Mm-hmm. What did they love about two that warranted a three? What changed in three that made them do a four and five and that sort of thing? Because mm. this is so, a one-man operation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I understand he, it was great money-wise, you know, he's making money off mm-hmm. of it, but yeah. he didn't seem the type, especially when he did... Um, was it Five Nights at Freddy World or something like that when he yeah. did the mobile kid game or yeah, whatever? Some, some, there was some yeah, thing. Yeah, like they complete, he completely went in a different direction. Mm-hmm. He didn't really care too much about the money that it was bringing in after a certain point. Mm-hmm. He just wanted to make a game that he wanted to make. Yeah. So I'm curious as to what was driving those sequels mm-hmm. for him to make those and what people got out of them uh, that were different from the previous one that they were, that they had played. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm curious about. None of us here played it, so I have no idea. But yeah, he's not working on six. I don't necessarily know necessarily know that I believe him on that though. I know where we're just gonna get six popped up. Right, because he's done that before. Mm-hmm. He's just boom, put a game out there without yeah. any yeah. Here. fanfare. Here, three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so part of me was thinking, eh, what if he's done this and it's gonna be like a frog fractions thing? Where you're playing some other game and you trigger something and boom, here's Five Nights at Freddy Six. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I don't necessarily know that I believe him on that. So, just wait and see. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's see how that's gonna be. Platinum Games teasing Bayonetta on Switch. I don't know if you saw that or no. you heard about it. Or um, care. their <laughs> Twitter account put a picture of Bayonetta, one with a blue background and then one with a red background. And they were, you know, they were on top of each other. The the images were on top yeah. of each other, and a lot of people were taking that as the uh, switch, the Joy-Con controllers that are red and blue, mm-hmm. and thinking that was a uh, a tease. My initial thought is like the uh, Bayonetta one and two that was on, you know, on Wii U. Well, Wii U. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put it on Switch, so transfer from one console to another thing like Honestly, that. Honestly, I'd like for them to do that on Switch because I didn't get in on a lot of games on the on the Wii U, so. If they wanna if they wanna put out Wind Waker or a, or a nice collection of Zelda games on the Switch, I would enjoy that. But you have a Wii U, don't you? I do now, yes. So you could play Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD and all those. But think of the portability. That's one of the things that the Switch is really great with is the fact that it can become a portable game, uh, game console for about half an hour. No, you get three hours on it. Um, you get three hours of playtime on it, but still, it's one of those things. When I go to this will be interesting. When I go to PAX Prime this year, see how many yeah. people are switching. I'll out. have the Switch. I'm not going to carry it around the show floor, but yeah. I'll have it inside the hotel room, and I can plug it in and just play it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't even have to hook it up to the TV. I can just sit there and play it in bed, or you know, whatever. I can take it with me if I go somewhere and play it in a restaurant or something like that. Not that I'm probably going to, but just to be able to play a game, a console. I have a 3DS as well, but 
I mean, I'm basically transporting a console, a full console with me, um, yeah. without all the wires needed, uh, without having to connect it to a TV, without having extra controllers. It's just boom, right there. So that's I like that aspect about it. So for them to re-release Bayonetta, Bayonetta Two, uh, Zelda, Wind Waker, Tropical Freeze, uh, well, they've already done Mario Kart. Um, any of the other big titles that came out for uh, for Wii U, which there weren't many, but yeah, I'd like to have them just for the portability aspect. Yeah. So I'm still, I guess I'll still be waiting for Bayonetta two on tw- on um, Steam or something. I guess I don't know. I know. I wish they'd get over that. I don't. I don't know why they haven't been able to do anything with that. Yeah. But look, if to Bayonetta, keep it off of or to to move it outside of Wii U and put it on other platforms. Yeah. Look, if Bayonetta made it to uh, made it to Steam, why not? Why not to? I know. So just wait and see, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War earlier. There was a thing now that lets you import your your nemesis, your your biggest nemesis from the nemesis system. Mm-hmm. Whoever that is, you can import them over to Shadow of War. Uh, and then your biggest follower or whoever was your, like, right-hand orc, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can transfer them over. The thing that I found playing that game, though, was that the Nemesis system was ridiculously underused in my playthrough. Mm-hmm. Um, was it? Because in order to get a Nemesis, you have to die. Like, they have to kill you in order for them to rank up and then become your nemesis. Mm -hmm. I was doing really well at that this morning. Dying? Dying. Oh, yeah. yeah, Mm. There wasn't... I didn't didn't hardly die by, you know, in any of those kind of battles or anything. It was something Mm -hmm. I could easily get away from. I did it a few times, but that's the thing. When I did it and it bumped them up, you know, it ranked them up, Mm -hmm. I had, like, revenge. I was like, I gotta go kill them now. So it was never... They didn't kill me enough to really get this ranking of being any kind of a threat. And so it was ba- what was it basically? It was like one step forward, one step back, over and over, constantly, constantly again? I didn't die much, but when I yeah. did, and, and when I did and they ranked up that orc, yeah. I, I kept him on my radar and went after him when I could. Mm-hmm. And then I killed him. Yeah. <laughs> so he so did his back, to, back yeah. to where he started from. Well, he's yeah. dead. He didn't yeah. go back to where he starts from. He's dead. Okay. But well. I don't have, you know, that doesn't... <sighs> That doesn't make the next person in line your nemesis. Mm-hmm. It moves them up, but they don't they're not your nemesis because they've never met you before. Right. You know, you haven't battled with them yet. So So no one was hard enough to become your yeah, nemesis. Yeah. Okay. With the yeah. exception of like there were a few times like one of the big monsters killed me, but that doesn't count in the nemesis system. Mm-hmm. Um there were some deaths from the main villain at the end of the game and that but that doesn't count that in counts, the nemesis yeah. system. So it had to be someone in the in the rankings of the uh, of the orc army uh, mm-hmm. to do that uh, in order to build that up. So and it just it just rarely happened for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't have uh, I don't have a big bad to bring over uh, who is my nemesis. Even so, even still, I don't have anybody who is my uh, right hand orc person to bring over either, because. I used them in battles, and they, most of them died. <laughs> but they were good enough to be a distraction for everybody else yeah. while I did other things, even though they died. So hopefully they fix this in the new game, mm-hmm. where maybe you don't have to die, you know, or, or maybe your reputation can can spread mm-hmm. through the Nemesis system, and, and maybe it worked that way or something. I'm not sure. Because the way it is now, it ain't working. Not the way it was for Shadow of Shadow of uh, Mordor, it didn't yeah. work for me. Yeah. Um, I love the Nemesis system, though. Don't get me wrong; the Nemesis mm-hmm. system is not broken. I love it. Um, I wish I expected and I wished that more games would have taken that concept and put that in the, put it in their games. I love that aspect of having rivals like that mm-hmm. that stay with you throughout the game. Um. You know, going over to a game that I'm more familiar with, Burnout. Whenever you get taken down by some other car, they become your, they become a nemesis. They don't necessarily rank up or anything. But when you get close to them on the race, Mm -hmm. their icon is a different color than everybody else's because they've taken you down before. So they're a revenge target. Mm -hmm. So 
I like that. And I like something that spans through the game that can um that can sort of have that thread. Story wise, you would game Nemesis. Um because there were story missions that you would do where you couldn't outright kill that orc. You could do damage to him, like like maybe, you know, uh, take one of his eyes or something like that. So mm -hmm. then he's blind in one eye. Uh, he goes through in the story, he gets ranked up to other things, and of course he remembers what happened to him, like what you yeah. did, and then you fight him again later. But in order to advance the story, you pretty much have to kill him. So he wouldn't become... Again, he's not going to become a big nemesis for me in that he's system. Dead. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you have to kill him to advance the story. Uh, otherwise, it ends, and it's like, hey, he just ranks up, but he doesn't... <laughs> he's still the boss that you have to fight to get through that mission. Yeah. You know? He may rank up again story every up. time you yeah. die. That makes him harder to beat, but... Eventually, you got to beat him. Yeah, story eventually, you're, he's, yeah. Got, he's got to die to keep the story and going To forward. advance the story, so... Yeah. There were problems with it that I've hoped they've worked out. There, uh, some way, I hope that I can have a many more nemeses uh, in my list rather than a bunch of dead orcs or people who just haven't faced me yet. Mm -hmm. So, did you get the DLC for Shadow of Mortar? Mm -hmm. I did. STM Fuller's asking if it's worth four bucks. Uh, was that during? Uh, <laughs> You should call in. Was that during the sale? Because if you got it at sale price, sure. Um, that's something I didn't play was the DLC. I may need to go back and install it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I have the DLC. Because the Game of the Year edition was like 5 bucks on sale. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. been 5 bucks for, for quite a while. But I uninstalled that. Totally forgot that there was DLC. I knew there was DLC for like there was costumes and things that were different outfits that your, your guy yeah. could wear and that Cosmetic sort of thing. Stuff. Mm -hmm. But there was story mode DLC too. Mm-hmm. There was also like arena DLC stuff where you know take on waves yeah. of orcs and that sort of thing. But there were there was story mode DLC with that. I totally forgot. Yeah, dude, STM Flow the Game of the Year edition. If it's still four dollars, pick it yeah. up for four bucks, dude. Go for it. Yeah. I mean, even if you've already bought the full game and just want to get the Game of the Year edition for the DLC, just go for it. Yeah, four dollars, pick it up, do it. That's what I say. All right, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll have our final segment of the show. And if you want to get in on the show, you can. 334-272-9228 is the number. Uh, here is music from Castlevania, Lament of Innocence, as requested by Sarah. Ooh. This is the prologue. We'll be back with more in game chat after this. to in-game chat with music from Final Fantasy X-10, whatever. <laughs> X-10? 
Even worse. 20. The track is called To Zenarkand. Zenarkand? Zenarkand? Zenarkand. Okay. That was the first Final Fantasy with the uh, voice acting. Yes, it was. The whole laughing scene with Titus and... Ugh. It was bad. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people on uh, the, in the chat room saying that Mordor, Shadow of Mordor Game of the Year is 4 bucks on Steam, 4 bucks on Xbox, yep. 4 bucks on PS4. Look, yeah, 4, $4 dollars, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely worth buying for 4 bucks. This isn't like a... Easily. Yeah, this isn't like um, Duke Nukem Forever when it's like $2 and you're like, I don't know, man. That's <laughs> I can go to Taco Bell for that. Yeah. I don't exactly know what's going to carry over into the other game. I know they're trying to do the Nemesis system. They're bringing that over, but... I don't, I, you didn't really make choices in the in the game, so I don't think there's going to be any kind of uh, any kind of choices brought over or anything like that. I think the Nemesis system is about the only thing that you can bring over. So I that guess you could transfer. Speaking of Shadow of Mordor, did you beat it? Uh, I guess you've been playing it. I did beat it. I, you know, we talked about we didn't do over the games that we've played. Um, That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> well, you weren't here, but I did beat that. Okay. Uh, last week I talked about the ending of that game, so I did finish it. I haven't beaten it yet. I realize now, though, that there's story DLC that I haven't played. The other game that I've played, uh, that I I went through the Dishonored DLC. DLC. Yes, I did that as well. That uh, The level design in that game outshines any other level design of any game that I've ever played, ever. Mm -hmm. uh, Dishonored is just brilliant with its level design, and I believe it carries over in Dishonored 2. I've been playing that. Um, I haven't started playing that yet. I wanted to take a break from my Dishonored, so I started uh, uh, so, Old Blood. Okay. Uh, so when you uh, did um, The Witches, mm -hmm. uh, did you finish it out lethal or non-lethal? It was lethal. Okay, I went non-lethal. Yeah, I killed her, yeah. No, I did, like, my whole playthrough of Dishonored was... Stabby, stabby. Stabby, stabby. <laughs> Here, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. We've talked about how it doesn't work in it doesn't work in other stealth games like Splinter Cell, but in Dishonored, you got two paths you can go, right? Lethal or non-lethal. You can go good or you can go bad. Mm -hmm. And like the canon ending is when you play good, right? I yeah. think that's the ending that they that they stick with. Yeah. Which I think is stupid. Um, I wish they wouldn't stick with any ending. I wish they'd just carry over and not let it be canon. Just be your I, own playthrough. I wish Dishonored 2 could read your save file for Dishonored 1. And, it, I mean, you know, depending on which ending you went. But then that would be a little bit tougher because, especially with 2. But, like, if games did that where they could, like, see how you went originally. Well, my problem is is that they give your character all these different powers that basically rip other people apart. <laughs> yeah. So you can't use them. Like, you can't use anything that they give you power-wise. the responsibility of power, Scott. That's the stupidest thing in the world. Because <laughs> I'm going through a 2 right now as a stealth and non-lethal. So I'm ghost, you know, this last mission I ghosted and didn't kill anyone. I talked about this, but, like, the ads for Dishonored 2 showed, uh, sh what's her name? Um, what's, the was it what's the girl's name? Jessica, Elizabeth, I don't know. No. Elsa? No. Um, Horatio, I don't know. What is her name? What is I the forget. daughter's name? It's Corvo, it and then... Bleh. Chick. <laughs> Could you... you Googling that real quick there, <laughs> RJ? looking this up. Who's this? Corvo and who? I don't know. What game know. is this? Lady? Is it a lady? Lady something? Well, well, the the Sonic. wife was... uh Dishonored two characters. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Corvo, and then the woman. The, the empress. Girl Corvo. <laughs> Probably in the chat room. Right now. Uh, Emily called one. Emily. Emily. Yes. Yeah, I'll say in the chat room by oh, now. God, I am so sorry, chat room. Girl Corvo. <laughs> I like Girl Corvo though. Uh, so yeah, you can play either as a uh, Girl Corvo or male Corvo. They just said her name, man. I know. Yeah, I know. Emily or uh, or Corvo. Um, she's the, the one who gets kidnapped in the first one. She is. She does. The trailers for Dishonored too. The the trailers for it. The gameplay for it. The uh, television advertisements for it all saw her doing this really awesome stuff, but she was killing everybody she came in contact <laughs> with. They used that as the marketing. Look at all this neat stuff you can do with all these neat tricks you have, and look how horribly you can mess up your bad guys, right? Yeah. Well, that's not really what we want you to do for the good ending. You don't need to be doing that. For the ending that you, for the true ending, 
you need to go stealthy and not kill all these people and be non-lethal and stuff like that. Oh, the harder route. It annoys me, though, that they give you all of this, but then they punish you when you use it. Yeah, like, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm, since I'm going through a stealth, I have a metric ton of bullets. Like, I max out bullets. I keep on finding bullets, but I don't use my gun because it's loud and loud, it kills. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I don't even really use my crossbow except to maybe, like, you know, distract people. You know, I'm, like, all sneaking up behind them and choking them out. Mm-hmm. You know, so it makes it more interesting. I think uh, when I go through playing through as the second time, because uh, you can play through as, you know, either character, and you get your powers taken away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you can either go through with powers or even without powers, which is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, next time I'm going to go through. Yeah, I'm sorry. How are you going through this first playthrough? Corvo, uh, with powers, uh, stealth, uh, no kill. Okay. You're playing it nice. That's what I'm trying to. I might just get frustrated and start blowing everyone up. I'm going to be, <laughs> and you're going, you're going, you're going male flowers. I'm going lady death. Yeah. <laughs> just to have the opposite, just to have the yeah. opposite thing. That's what I want to do. I haven't started that yet, but I am on, uh, I'm on chapter seven of an eight chapter game with old blood. Uh, are you going to do um, the DLC? There's old blood. There's DLC. Oh no no, no. Old, old blood is the DLC. Yeah, old blood is the uh, DLC. Yeah, yeah yeah. Did you already do New Order? Oh yeah. Okay. I played New Order on James's uh, That's right. account, That's which right. is weird, uh, <laughs> because you could do the Steam Share thing. So I played. I, I turns out I don't even own New Order, because I I thought I did, but I originally played that game through Steam Share with James' account, mm. and that's how I had old blood in my system because I thought, oh I've got old blood, I should play it. Because it registers as, you know, me having the game. Right. And I went to try and play it. I went to try and play it. It wasn't working. And I was like, oh, this says Fishbangs Games. Mm, <laughs> we have lost that connection. Uh, our our Steam Share thing is not working correctly. So hmm. uh, I actually had to buy it. Luckily, Steam Sale was going on. Picked it up for 10 bucks. Okay. It's worth it. And I'm playing through it now. Um, it is worth it. You know, <laughs> there's more uh, Wolfenstein... 3D that I feel like I'm playing than Wolfenstein Old Blood. You know, when he takes a nap, when he goes to rest, and then you play the old, yeah, whatever bit game that was. Yeah. <laughs> the old PC version of the game, you know, the old uh, yeah. Wolf 3D. I feel like I play more of that than I actually do of the regular game. Really? Well, because it's maze-like, you know? Mm-hmm. Um Trying to go through and find where the key is to open up the door and to get back and whatever else. It's not maze-like when you're playing the main game. It's very like, go in this direction, and then boom, you're there. Kill. Yeah, there is no searching for keys or searching for doors or going... There's no maze to it. Did you do uh, Doom? I have not played Doom. I have it. They have... I started not, playing it, and I never finished. It's not as much... Like uh, the depth of the, I know they uh, have the throw, it, yeah. throwback. Yeah. It's more like you go into like one room that was from a game, and I I remember like going into this, you know some of the rooms saying and I remember exactly where in the level this was, mm-hmm. but it's not the full level yeah. or an extended part. It's just like a room, uh, but it's still kind of neat to you know get your little sprite power ups and. Yeah, I love the uh, you know. I love old blood. I I, just, I it. As soon as I started playing it again, I was like, "Oh man, this is great!" Because I had forgotten what that was, what that felt like playing uh, the New Order. So Old Blood is just fantastic. I'm enjoying it. I think it might be a little short, but then again, on DLC terms, I think it's exactly what it needs to be. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've been playing. Um, Matt, you've been playing Dishonored, which we, or Dishonored Two, which we just talked about. Been playing that. Um, I think when I'm done with that, I'm gonna do. There's no DLC for it, right? Dishonored Two. There will be coming up, but I don't even know okay. that that's DLC. I think it's. I think it's a standalone. Yeah, I think well, it's an expandalone. I think is what James likes to call it. So I think that's <laughs> I like what it, it is. But uh, that's coming up in September or October. October is already packed with stuff. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Um, Sarah, what about you? What have you played recently, lately? Not a Nothing? lot. Well, my work schedule right now is six thirty a.m. until eight p.m. So doesn't leave a lot of time t- for games, yeah. but a little bit of. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, which I'm still slowly working my way through, and uh, then I picked up Shadow of Mordor for the the free to play days, and learned that I am really bad at it. It's Batman combat, basically. 
You know, it's Warner Brothers, Batman combat, but... Yeah, um, if I could use the bow more, I would be fine, but I find myself in very large crowds of works, mm. and then that goes poorly. Uh, I don't know if there's any kind of cheats for that game. I know on PC there are plenty of cheats for it. <laughs> are there? Oh, yeah, for Shadow of Mordor? I didn't even bother to look those up. Oh, yeah, no, there's tons. Um, most of them you don't... Need? Need. Um, however, for... The bow, um, there's one that like gives you infinite, whatever that power is that slows like everything. Elf shot or yeah, something. elf shot gives you infinite elf shot. Not necessarily arrows, but like how time slows down. You're using up a, a meter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suck at that <laughs> <laughs> because even with a mouse, I am sitting there trying to aim so like let me get it because they're still moving. They're moving yeah. really slow, but they're still moving. I'm like ah, get it there, get it, ah, there. You know, um, I just can't be quick with it. So no, there's tons of uh, there's tons of that for for Shadow of Mordor. Um, I think there might be some for Dishonored too. I need a really. Uh, no, I'm not, not Dishonored too. I meant Dishonored also. Dishonored also. Yes, yes. not Dishonored <laughs> too. Um, I picked I picked that up. Yeah. Uh, I think after this, I I, I want to get back into Fallout Four, but I also need to finish Shadow of Mordor. I'm going through the games that are having sequels being released, so that's yeah. why I'm doing. That's why I did Dishonor because it's going to have the uh, the expand alone thing. That's why I'm doing Wolf because it's going to have the new Colossus coming out, that sort of thing. So I'm going through there. Mad Max is one I just want to get off my plate because it's been in my thing for a while. It's been installed on your hard drive for a while. Well, it's so repetitive. So at this point, I'm just like, you know what? I'm screw this side quest. I'm just going to stick to the story and go through it and just get, get it, done. it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really feel that way because that's what Shadow of Mordor taught me. <laughs> Stop messing around with all these little side things and go and just kill orcs and whatever mm -hmm. because you don't get any of the really cool powers until you progress through the story. All the right. story I've been opens doing up side powers. Missions. Yeah, the story opens up the powers. Um, the powers for you to brand orcs so they can fight with mm -hmm. you, that happens way later in the game. So there's a whole other map. Okay. <laughs> There's a whole other map in Shadow of Mordor that I never knew about until I played more of the story. I still need a Witcher 3. I need to finish that out. I swear, it, Sarah, I don't know if it's you or not. We should, we're getting a ton <laughs> of people following us on Twitch. I just got four emails, like, boom, right there. I think it's... It's the paper cranes. They're mesmerized. Man. RJ, what about you? What have you been playing? I uh, played a little bit of uh, Sleeping Dogs. I finally got that oh, on the PS4. Oh, that's a fun game. Uh, yeah, it, it is until you, uh, when you learn to which side of the road to drive on. Because it does take place in, in Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Yep. So You're on the, I'm uh, like, <laughs> I'm having head-on collisions in the first 15 minutes of the game because I'm not, so, I'm not, uh, not getting it right. You know, I lived yeah. uh, for a couple of years in England, right? right? Right. And when I first came back to the United States, I was living in Pensacola. And like the first weekend I got back, I you know, got in a car... And then uh, got to a T intersection, <clears throat> turned, and I was on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, just not yeah. thinking. Yeah, you so get used to it. yeah, you get used to it. And yeah, getting on the get, uh, getting in on the wrong side of the car, always getting on the passenger side, <laughs> side of the driver's side. Yeah, yeah, it's real authentic. So I give I give uh, props for the authenticity of the game. So yeah, I'm having a little fun with that. Um, haven't made uh, too much progress. I think I got to the point where I've met um, Amanda. In the story, so if anyone knows about the uh, mm -hmm. game itself, I've met Amanda and I've learned the, some few moves from the uh, dojo. I've got that on PC. Teacher. That's something I should probably look into as well. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you've been collecting the uh, the collecting dojo the sta statues? collecting the statues for the for the dude. Yeah, twelve okay. statues are missing from the guy's uh, dojo. Someone came in and uh, stole, stole them. them. He stole eleven of them. He has one, so you got to go around and find uh, the rest of them. I think I found three or four so far. Uh, and every time you do, you get a new move from him. So mm -hmm. that's a that's incentive to go out and find the rest of them. Um, I haven't gotten all the DLC. There's like you know uh, uh, extra costumes that you can get that you know have stat boosts and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, I think, I think the, the vehicles. Outfit I got, yeah, the outfit I got now is the um, uh, uh, minor minor thug outfit. It's okay. the one that gives five percent boost to your melee. So. Since I'm a uh, no gun or anything like that, so you well, need to pump. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, Hong later. Kong. It's yeah. guns. Unlike Grand Theft Auto, guns are hard to come by mm -hmm. in this game. You know, they are. There are a few, but I mean, it's mostly melee and punching. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure eventually you're gonna get your hands on one. Um, the way this game is going. Like I said, there there are a few. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not it's not like you know ammunition or. 
Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Still love their commercials, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I've, um, Fun game. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm having a little uh, good time with that. Have I'm, you tried the, uh, was it the Death from a Thousand Cuts, I think it was? No. It's, you know, basically how long can you last, you know. Survival mode? Survival mode, yeah. Okay. No, Lethal Migrant says use motorcycles. They're much easier to maneuver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, that is true. I've uh, I've learned that, and you don't have to worry about which side of the car, you, which side of the vehicle you get in on. <laughs> Either way, it works. I got the uh, Johnny Rico outfit that allows you to like jump further to um, attack, you know, to hijack moving vehicles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that was a lot of fun. And actually, I have a motorcycle that's like a cloud. Hmm. Um, like Final Fantasy clouds? Or? No, like uh, like a cloud. It's a um, motorcycle it, in the was a Care Bear well, thing. <laughs> no, it, um, I. It has like a cloud underneath it, and it's like. It's not showing radiant. my age, but it might be showing yours if you get yes. the uh, if you get the joke. No, I get it. no, it's like a radiant. Um, I think the outfit um, that it comes with is supposed to be like a, some kind of like a. Technicolor dreamcoat. No. Uh, okay. Hong Kong, like a. It's Chinese, all I can think of, man. A Chinese deity and everything. So like you have like the the cloud. Sound like bike. you're describing the Nimbus cloud in Dragon Ball. I guess, yeah. Or something like that. I don't something know. Like that, I guess but... I'll skip that one. Yeah, that, no, I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I'm Nothing having... more threatening than the man showing up on a cloud. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, I've been playing a little bit of that. And for the rest, for the most part, uh, I was playing uh, the Golf Club 2. Uh, That's right. I am still learning how to hit uh, proper shots with that because I've been playing this for a little over a week now. Uh, every shot I've taken has gone to the right it pulls right it's something about that analog but i guess the way you pull it because the way you do a shot is you pull the analog stick back and then you push it forward and the accuracy depends on where the stick lies when you um when you uh, go back and forth and apparently i don't know what i'm doing but i'm looking um at the stick when i'm using it and i'm going up but the shot keeps going right so i guess it's on the backswing or something so to adjust i've had to move the uh add draw and fade to every shot to make sure it goes uh, straight uh more straight than uh than normal but um, the thing about it is, golf, just like golf, you have to take a lot into account. You got to take a wind direction. Which club do you using? How much loft do you put in there? How much uh, draw? How much fade? Um, what type of what type of surface is it lying on? Do you want to hit the left side of the green or right side of the green, depending on all the hills and uh, hills and the um, and the uh, variation in the. Um, Lisa well, Migraine says you're not alone in this. That yeah. a lot of people are complaining about uh, straight shots are yeah. about pretty much impossible. Yeah, I mean. Uh, and the, like I said, to fix that, I've had to uh, put a lot of draw and fade um, on the shots, especially with the driver and woods. I've had to do um, put a lot of uh, put a lot of draw on that. But uh, yeah, but the payoff comes really when you take in all those things into account and you do it right. That's that's the payoff you get from uh, doing this game because there have been times when you've uh, when you do take things into account and you do everything right and the shot still goes wrong. Mm-hmm. There's something you just something that you missed. I mean, that's how I've taken it. But I understand um, <laughs> for years watching my dad play golf out of the uh, Lagoon Park here. I can see pe- why people take their clubs and throw them halfway down the fairway, or <laughs> or take their bags full of hundreds of dollars worth of equipment and throw it in the throw it in the uh, water somewhere, and, be, and they're done with this game, fed up. You know, like uh, how someone gets salty and pops off during a fighting game tournaments that I've seen mm-hmm. over and over again, or someone wants to break their controller, which is uh, too expensive for my taste. So I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I can understand that. But yeah, it's worth going through all that. Uh, frustration to get the uh to when you start getting it right and eventually if i keep playing this enough i'm going to start getting a lot of shots right also awesome. um yeah and um i've also tried the uh societies portion of the game uh you build a society um invite people to it you know give yourself some uh, fees to join and you can add this money to tournaments and people will play your tournament and they'll compete for uh money prizes and what they're because uh they do tell you in the game you have to spend money to make money so yeah, you have to when you get your societies up and running, you get more people joining there. You, the money will start pouring in, and you can do all types of stuff for uh, everybody who joins your society. So that's a nice little aspect of the game that I need to get into. So I've built one, and uh, if anybody's interested, it's called the Brass Anchor. So just look for that and uh, see if you can join up. When I get the thing up and running, maybe I can get okay. some uh, get some uh, tournaments going. Pop that up on our Facebook page too. Whenever you do that, and okay. uh, I'll get a, and you can get a tweet out if you want to. Yeah. Uh, and just keep reminding us about it um, mm-hmm. in every episode. That's fantastic, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything? What was those? What else? There was something else. Oh, just uh, these are little bitty things here. The Destiny Two 
apparently will have locked loadouts at some point. Mm -hmm. Like some of your missions, some of your things that you do, you won't be able to change your loadout mm -hmm. mid-game or mid-mission, whatever it is. You'll have to go in with whatever you've got. Um, so you won't be able to change up your weapon on the fly. Uh, there was that. And then, oh, apparently it's the summer of Halo or Halo summer or something like that. Uh, they're going to do backwards compatibility for all the Halo games onto Xbox One. Hmm. All the 360 maps that were DLC for every Halo game will be available for free to download. This includes Reach. This includes ODS... Well, Reach was already backwards compatibility, but this includes Halo 3, ODST, uh, Halo 2, Halo 1, stuff like that. So... ODST is still my favorite. ODST was my favorite as well. Um, so it's great that they're doing backwards compatibility of this beyond the Master Chief Collection, which you had to pick up in order to play that. So I'm glad it'll be available. And all those maps are going to be completely free. Will it be like, digital so you can like, buy them and play them? Or? Well, it's all digital. Yeah. That's, the only way it can, that's the only way you can play it is digitally. I mean, if you've got the disc, you put it in the system, and it says, oh, you own this, and then it downloads it. Okay. But then you but have I'm to... I'm wondering, would I have to buy the Master Chief Collection? No, you don't have to buy the Master Chief Collection, but if you already own the games on mm -hmm. your 360 and still have them, I do. you put the disc in and then you can play that. Okay. So it has to have, it's just like Red Dead Redemption when I had that, I had to have the disc in the machine in order to play Red Dead Redemption, even though I was playing it from a download. The disc was there to, verify, to verify that, that I own the game. Although they had a sale recently and I just I went ahead and bought it digitally. So... Um, yeah, everything is pretty much in Master Chief Collection that I know of, um, but I'm not sure about I'm not sure about the DLC maps. I don't know. I need to read more. Let me see. Let me read more on this real quick. Do we have time? Get a little time. ODST was in Master Chief Collection. Uh, it was as a download. Okay. Um, depending on today, Microsoft and 343 Studios kicked off the Halo Summer Celebration. A ton of news. Uh, leading things off was words that Halo 5's 4K upgrade on Xbox One X. Uh, so they're going to do that. They called it a true 4K update. Additionally, 343 said it was working with Microsoft to add four legacy Halo games to the Xbox One backward compatibility list. Halo 3, ODST, Halo 4, and then Halo. Uh, all will include their original campaigns and multiplayer modes and support for LAN play, inclu including play between Xbox One and Xbox 360 devices. As an added bonus, the Xbox Store will offer every Xbox 360 Halo add-on map pack for free. So, there you go. They promise lots more to come in this. The 10th anniversary year for Halo 3, uh, including a Halo 3 anniversary throwback playlist for Halo 5. This is getting confusing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's uh, that's what we're getting there. And now we have to write... God, the amount of new followers we're getting... Uh, something's wrong. With I'm that. not trusting it. Not at all. Look at this number. <laughs> let me let me refresh. Look at this number. Uh, wait, it's refreshing. We're at 26 new followers. Uh, just some, since we've been on. Something's wrong. You gonna come back next week? <laughs> Let's go for 30. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for joining us in the chat room as well as everybody listening on the stream and on the radio. We want to thank everybody who grabs us each week from iTunes or wherever you get our show for later use. We do appreciate that. We appreciate everybody in the chat room. Uh, so go to endgamechat.net, join us on Twitter, Facebook, our forums at colonyofgamers.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, join the 26 or 7 other people and subscribe to our YouTube or our Twitch channel if you'd like. Uh, if you're on Steam, join our Steam group. If you're on uh, PS4 or Xbox, we've got groups there as well. Sarah, thanks so much for making the trip. Absolutely. Uh, I hope your trip home <laughs> is good. Fingers um, crossed. Yes. Yeah. And again, anytime you want to come. You are more than welcome to be on the show with us. So uh, we go out on another track that Sarah selected. This is from the Banner Saga. It's called Our Heels Bleed from the Bites of Wolves. That's what it's called. Anyway, <laughs> see you guys next Saturday. Have a great week.